David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear no evil. I will not fear no evil. For you, God, are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare us a table before me. Hallelujah. In the presence where? In the presence of my enemies. God Almighty. Right in their presence. Right. There are some people who thought you would never come back from the setback. When God is getting ready to bring you back, is going to be right in front of them. Are you, not, you, you want to hide. You want to hide. No, 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 no. Right in the presence of your enemies. Oh, hallelujah. You anoint my head with oil and my cup. My cup run it over. Somebody all are overflow. Everybody raise your hand and say, This month, before it finish, I shall live in my overflow. Somebody praise God. Your cup run it over. Notice God doesn't promise. That you would have to deal with debt. Or fear. Or evil. Or enemies. As a matter of fact, every time God get ready to bless you and start blessing you, you get more enemies. The greater you look, the more blessed you are. Seems like it's the more enemies you have. You're going to have them. Don't worry about them. You're going to have them. There are some people, even in your very family, who are just too jealous of you because God's blessing you. They can't deal with your blessing. They expect you to be the worst, but you trust God and lay in his pasture and he made you the best. Somebody praise God. So he don't promise that you are not going to have debt coming at you, fear coming at you, evil coming at you, enemies coming at you. But he simply said that in spite of them, everybody say in spite of them. In spite of all of them. Hallelujah. And uh, sometimes in the midst of them, God Almighty, your cup will still overflow with his blessing. Somebody praise God. I said, in spite of them, in the midst of them, God is still going to allow you to receive an overflow. Amen, somebody. Tell them on a fear for it. It's just God. It's just God. Somebody praise God. Next time you pour a cup of tea or coffee, and it overflow onto the saucer. You have an uh, 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 example. You have a perfect setting of an overflow. But I'm going to take a little further. I'm going to call it your surplus. Come on, no man. Come on, no man. Somebody says surplus. Somebody says surplus. You, you, you shall have enough plus. More than you need plus more money plus more food plus a better job plus uh -uh. I didn't say minus you know. I said plus somebody holler plus 
Somebody says surplus. Surplus mean you can store up, you can put down, you can lay aside. Somebody is about to find some enough money that for the first time you're going to go into investment. <laughs> I want to prophesy, but the people are not excited about it. Somebody praise God. You're going to go to the bank and say, come on, banker, talk to me now. Where can I put this? Where can I fix this? Where can I invest this? Because I have a sir. Somebody praise God. You're not living from hand to mouth. No more will you go into the bank and wondering if money is in your account. You go to the bank and you wonder, how much do I... Somebody says surplus. Oh Lord, send me a... Somebody praise God. Oh, holy time coming. I ain't going to be long. Let me finish this. Your God is a God of surplus. You know the problem with some of you, I believe. Because you're not an investor. You're not a giver. You're not a, a person who loves to bless the work. And you, right now, some of you don't even know what it is to get a surplus. Some of you don't know what it is to own a million, two million, three million. Some of you, some of you live in from Ant you, you're, not, you're not used to. But that is about to change. I decree and declare somebody in this room, by the end of this month, starting February, the second month, you shall eat a millionaire status. They don't want it to know. Maybe I need to give you. Somebody praise God. Somebody had a surplus. Plus, plus, plus. Somebody praise God. I say your God is a God of surplus. God will genuinely generate and provide all that you need. He will supply then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Somebody praise God. Lift your hand and say, this year I will not be the borrower. You will not be the beggar. You will be the lender. You will be the giver. Ah, come on somebody. The Bible said when Jesus asked, is there any food? Nobody had nothing but one little boy. He had five loaves and two fish. Somebody praise God. Jesus said, give it to me. He gave it to him. He blessed it and served it. And there were 12 baskets full of syrup. Somebody praise God. You have to give something to get something. You have to release something to receive something. I was teaching this morning and yesterday. And I was telling the folk, God control your inlet. But you control your outlet. And when God blesses you through your inlet, you got to let out. A lot of people, they don't let out, they store up. And when you store up, you only have what you store up because you're full and can't go no further. But every time you let out, God let in. And the more you let out is the more God. And that's how you get surplus. Somebody praise God. Lithiana Allah overflow. God is about to generate an avenue, an opportunity for somebody here who has not experienced a blessing from last year to receive an overflow this year. Come on, praise God. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Then you will always have enough and everything you need and plenty are uh, left over. Somebody praise God to share. Uh, uh, he saturates you with joy, with peace, so that you may overflow with open and the power of the Holy Spirit. He 
bestow a surplus of joy. He calls you to rejoice with joyful expectation. inexpressible and full of glory. He also provides a surplus of peace. Everybody say, I need peace. There's a peace in my soul. Somebody say, peace. There's some people wondering how you're living like that. After all the hell you've been through, you still look like you have peace. Somebody not talking to me. You still look like you have some joy left in you. Somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Somebody say saturate me. With peace. And joy. Hallelujah. When you have that peace and joy. You may overflow. With the power of his spirit. That he has bestowed upon your gracious life. He gives the peace of God which passeth all understanding. So when you are struggling to make ends meet. And when you are fearful of the future. Look in the mirror and say God is my insurance. God is my source. Can somebody do that? Uh, no matter what people want to say, I do. God is my refuge, my strength, my present help in time. I have more than enough. And my cup, and my cup, and my cup. And don't just uh, do that in times of need or crisis. Make it a habit to practice. Here is, here is where many people are going wrong. We take God for granted and treat God like a nobody until our situation get bad. And only God can help us. David was so powerful and so strong with God. He commit adultery and murder. Yeah? But he end up take the woman whose husband he murdered for one of his wives. The son he got from her that he commit murder for, that one died as a punishment. And he wept and he going crazy because he really wanted that boy. Based on what he did, he wanted to raise that boy in memory of maybe the father. But then he got another son from the same woman. His name was Solomon. When God got ready to choose somebody from David's line to turn them into a Chilean here, bless them, but not only bless them, ask and require them to build his temple, he chose Solomon. You didn't hear what I just said. Uh, what are you saying? How would God, see how he get that woman there. And then from the same woman, gave him the wisest man ever lived. But also the man who built the most powerful, beautiful, dynamic temple for God. Solomon. I bet some of you didn't know he was the son of of the same woman David committed adultery with. But God blessed him. And when God got ready to build the temple, he said, David, I don't want you to build it. I want your son, Solomon, to build the temple. I want to tell somebody, stop living the past. God has passed your past already. It's time to step into your green pasture and understand that God has already forgiven and is getting ready if you trust him in this season to bless everything that comes up in your lineage. Somebody praise God here. Somebody give God the glory. But I hear David said, if my son is going to build it, I am going to put in my offering.
and he, he was a David was a businessman, you know. He cut limp, um, timber and wood and all these things. He did gold and silver and stuff. So he had a lot of those. Amen. Praise God. A lot of, and he made sure to put down his part. Amen. Before he died to build a temple because he believed. And, and one of the things you need to understand about God and the Bible, the Bible men, is that every time God prophesied and released a word on them and told them what he was going to do, they built altar. And they make sacrifice. And God didn't ask them all the time to do it. But they just did it. Because they know it was a principle. Amen somebody. But I realize Jamaican people. That's why they work up here. Because they go spend their money if it get something. They are not freely to give. Until they hear what they might get. So they know that hope your man they good can give them some good highland powder and something. They carry them money. But spend, forget something, forget through the problem what they have. It has a wrong. Every day we must, David said, you know what David said? That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Gazing, if me even now get nothing, me just want gaze. Me just want in at the house. I just want to be in the presence of God. You see, because the more you spend time in the presence of God, you know, I forgot to tell God what you need. He will supply all. Are you with me? Stop giving only because I prophesy and tell you what you are going to get. Make up your mind. God has blessed me this week with 100,000. I'm going to make sure I give him my 10,000. God has blessed me with 50,000. I'm going to make sure I give him my 5,000. And if you develop that principle and that attitude, you don't have to wait till your problem because God will know before say so you're going to have a problem and then we solve them. Are you not hearing me? I got to teach you, you know, because some of you just love to jump up and touch up. We have the wrong concept. And God knows it. And that's why many times, no matter how I pray, nothing not happen. Because God knows that's all you come for. You must live by godly principle. He will supply your needs according to his riches. But God wants to see your sacrifice. Your attitude towards giving to God must be one of excitement. You must be willing at every chance to release. Wait. <laughs> Amen, somebody. I want you to live in expectation. But it's not because you give to get. It's because you are, are a worshiper in giving. So when you give, it's not just to get, but you worship God with yourself, your life, your substance, and everything you have. So God can have an appreciation for who you are as a person in his presence. Yes, sir. And then what he does now, he treats you like a sheep in his pasture. And that's why David now recognizes that he has moved from shepherd to sheep. Because now God is the caregiver. God is the restorer. God is the supplier. God, he said, he leadeth me. Everything, notice, it's not David trying to do nothing. Everything. The Lord is. I shall not. He maketh me. He maketh me. So even when I don't feel it, even when I don't think I need it, he maketh me to lie down in green. God made it happen. I want to prophesy over 10 people in this room. God is about to make the impossible thing happen in your life. He's in control. And when God is in control of you, he gets up every morning and says, where do I lead her? Where do I lead him? How do I bless him? How do I bless her? He's always looking for that opportunity to make sure you're in a green pasture. But if you're not a sheep, you cannot have a shepherd. He restored it. David is not saying he's doing anything. Everything he's saying, God is doing it. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the path of right. For his name's sake. That's the next thing. When God bless you, it's for you to serve him. And the next thing you need to understand is that anytime you become ungrateful, when God blesses you and you're not willing to serve him, you lose everything. 
You want to blame people, say they might obey you, they might do your things and whatever. No, your brook just dry up. Your well just dry up. God just dry it up because you turn your back on him. There are many people who God cannot bless until you promise, until you covenant to give him your life, to give him back his, because God always require back. Is there any Hannah here? The day Hannah get up and declare, God, if you bless me with one son, I will give him back to you in the temple. God said, that's what I want to hear from you. Hannah will, uh, uh, Penina will stop laugh at you. You'll get pregnant. But who did he or get pregnant with? Samuel, the prophet of God. So God wanted a prophet. So he old Anna's womb until she was ready to give that boy back to God. Then God released. Until you are prepared to give back to God what God has asked you to do, then you will not be blessed. Yeah. All right. so don't get up running up and down all over the place and look blessing. Because God has favored you to covenant with you. To bless you. But if you are not prepared to meet God where he wants you to meet him, you will end up waiting longer and living harder because you choose only to give God when you are ready to get back from God. That's why I, myself, Apostle, we're tired. We serve God every day. Whether God has blessed you or not, we have a duty. You have some people come and fasting every Monday. Whether they have need or not, they make it their opportunity and they fight to be in the present. Some people, you don't go see them when no situation rise. Then they come for your prayer. And when you pray, and you get what they, you don't see them again until they're in need again. Wrong. Hallelujah. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Dwell. I've never seen anybody who took time off to spend time with God end up dead poor or be worse than they are. I was telling the devotion this morning. Anybody notice there's a, there's a place where we, I buy tire. I love to buy tire. Tire warehouse. One of the biggest tire company or maybe the biggest in the country. They have brands and openings all over. Mandeville. Everywhere you go there's a tire warehouse. But let me tell you something. If you show up at tire warehouse on a Saturday, forget it. You can't get a tire and a battery. They are luck. The biggest company, right? Am I right? In the country that supplies tires and batteries on a Saturday, every single branch luck. I always admire that. Why? That man is a Sabbath keeper, whoever own it. And they are covenant to lock shop on Sabbath. So no matter how much money they are going to lose, shop lock. When you go Sunday, they are open. So it's a Sabbath. I bet if it's one Sunday, Christian own it. They are open every day, including Sunday, because business is good. You see, that's, the, that's what God looks at. You have your business. Oh, I have customer, so I have to open. Business good. I can't lock. Pastor, you a similar man. Maybe maybe pay me time. But well, you're gone. God wants your presence. He wants you to appreciate his blessing. So he said, Come. Spend time. Give. And I will make you. I will make you lie down. <laughs> Rest in green pastors. I will restore you. I will make your cup overflow. It wasn't David doing it. It was God. Amen? You must do what God wants you to do and just let God do you. Work it out. He said, he said, he lead at me beside he restore it he lead at me in. Here is your big problem. You're trying to do everything yourself. Because you have not invested in your time with God and your money with God. So God is not doing nothing for you. 
So you have to be fighting hard and working overtime to do everything for yourself. Lean not to your own understanding. Come on, the apostle and, and reverend had you up. I, I have you sit down. As some of you, if you're not lick down the place and carry on. Huh? That's why some people don't come to this place. But they don't want teaching and preaching. They want read up. They want you to tell them what they want to hear. Amen? I'm not good again. Because I'm getting old. I've, I've gotten older, stronger, and more powerful. So the Lord says you need to teach people truth. And don't try to do things to impress nobody. So that they love you and come where you're there. Come for the truth. Come for the word. Come for the worship. Come to present your body, yourself as a sacrifice to God. And watch God multiply and supply. Amen. When people go and spend to get a quick fix, it will run out fast. You have to go back again. But when, you, when God makes you to lie down in green, it means your belly full and you don't have to worry about tomorrow. Because the pastor is just green. Brothers and sisters, I was looking at something very important here. I was looking at the, the fire. Because the only way some of you are going to get deliverance is by fire. And listen to me good. There are some demons. The only way they are going to flee is by fire. There's some demonic tools that is fighting against you. The only way those demonic devices going to lose grip is by fire. Come on, somebody. Some of you here, you are under stronghold. But before you leave this place, God shall deliver you by fire. In the name of Jesus. Somebody give him a shout of praise here. Somebody give him a shout of praise here. Do you know that fire still come from heaven? Ah. Fire still comes from heaven. We are the same flesh and blood like Elijah. And Elisha called on fire from heaven. And today we are going to call down fire from heaven in this house. In the name of Jesus. I don't know about you. But, but I come to call down fire. Amen somebody. The Bible says. In 2 Kings chapter 1. And verses 12. He says. And Elijah answered. And says unto them. If I. Be a man of God. He brought down the fire from heaven. When the wicked and evil men came to arrest Elijah, the only thing Elijah could do is call down fire from heaven. Anything that come to arrest you today, we are going to call long fire. Hallelujah, Jesus. Me a fireman, so this is a city. If you don't want to call fire, you're a problem. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you leave this place and you don't get uh, freedom. Come on, somebody. You don't get deliverance. But I prophesy to you today that if we just call long fire from heaven, you can get your freedom. Come on, somebody. Somebody raise your hand and call long fire. Somebody call on fire. Anything that have you under arrest shall pull you by fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, as Elijah called on fire, so God shall send on fire and consume and destroy every barricade today. In the name of Jesus Christ, somebody clap your hands and shout fire in the house. Somebody shout fire. Somebody showed fire. Look at your name and say, neighbor, when we call on fire, 
Don't care where the devil put you. He have to bam it up. Come on to somebody. Don't care where the devil cut you up. When the fire come down, he go and bam up and destroy everything. Come on to somebody. And some of you cute and nice and pretty here. Come on with makeup and all these things and you're just cute in the church. Come on to somebody. This is a place where you must be cute in somebody. Me a warrior. Me a warrior. Me a old warrior for God. Come on to somebody. And if you're going to get deliverance, you have to call on fire. Somebody open your mouth. Somebody say fire. Listen. You see fire. Fire. A lot of people don't like fire because they know that fire is a dangerous element. Fire can melt iron. Fire. You can't track fire. Fire cannot be controlled. Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you need today the fire of God. Because glory to God, we're going to send the fire. Anywhere they're chanting over your name, we're going to send the fire in the name of Jesus. Somebody praise the Lord here. Somebody give him a shout of praise. Look at your name and say, neighbor, we're going to send the fire right at the place where they tie you and says you will never be loose. Come on to somebody. We're going to send the fire right at the altar where they're chanting. They pay the whole of your man to chant over you. Come on to church. Today the fire of God is going to burn and destroy. Come on to somebody. Can I have some fire people here? Somebody Last night I dreamed that I have a, I have a knife and I was cutting a card. I was just cutting a card. God says to me, when you go to fasting, I want you to cut the card. Come from some people. Come on to somebody. Somebody say cut the card. Somebody say cut the card. Something hold you. Come on to something tie you. Come on to somebody. Some of us should have married a long time ago, but there's a card. Come on to somebody with tie us. Come on, but today in the name of Jesus, the card must cut by fire. Somebody shout fire here. God Almighty. If you preach with me for a while because we have to let the prophet come and prophesy. Let him rest. Somebody shout hallelujah here. Look at your name and say neighbor. You see the card will they tie you with that you can't get your breakthrough. Today the card have to cut in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout fire here. Somebody shout fire. Somebody shout fire. You see, some of you here, the same problem that your mother have, are the same problem you come with, because there's a card that tied to you and your mother. Come on, somebody. But today, in the name of Jesus, every ancestral curse must be broken. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody raise your hand. Raise your cute hand here. Some of you cute and nice. Laba sakataya. Somebody say fire. Somebody say fire. Somebody raise your right hand and say, Holy Ghost knife. I need you today to cut, cut some bad mind people. We know why you prosper. We are gonna cut them off today. In the name of Jesus, some of you connect to some people, they smile with you, but them is against you. We are gonna cut in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody cut the man, somebody cut, cut in the Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus. Somebody shout fire, shout fire, shout fire. We are going, man. We're going up now. But look at your name and say, neighbor, it's time for a change. And God says to tell you, for a change to come, you have to cut loose. Come on, somebody. God is getting ready to cut you.
you loose from some family. God is getting ready to cut you loose from some people because they must hold you up. Come on, somebody. They must stop your blessing. But today, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare as Mali, oh yes, as Obadiah 117 said, there is deliverance upon Mount Zion. Somebody raise your hand. Show deliverance. Somebody show deliverance. Show deliverance. Look at the name and say, neighbor, your deliverance there, your healing there, your miracle there. Everything that you need is in the house. And all you got to do is to just open your mouth and worship God. Somebody shout yes. Somebody shout yes. Look at you, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're coming out of prison today. God Almighty, I give you freedom. Come on, somebody. Some person lock you down. Demon lock you down in a prison. But today, you must be delivered by fire. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout yes. All I got for you today, some choose some fire. If you fight with the fire, you shall get deliverance. If you fight with the fire, you will get freedom. If you fight with the fire, the mafia will release you. In the name of Jesus, somebody shout fire. Somebody shout fire. Look at the name and say, neighbor, then free the fire. So all neighbor, wicked neighbor, when you are shot fire, then say you must tap in eyes. But you can't shut up today because you want your deliverance in a fasting. Somebody shout yes. God is going to burn them up. God is going to burn up some witches. God is going to burn up. Come on, somebody. Raise your hand and say, burn them up, Lord. Burn them up. Holy Ghost. Every gathering against me. Burn them up. In the name of Jesus. Somebody call up the fire. Call up the fire. You can't lose the battle this week. You can't lose the fight this week. You are winning the battle. This week a victory. Somebody shout up on Mount Carmel. Somebody say fire. Shout fire. Shout fire. Look at your name and say neighbor. You better have fire today. You better have fire. In your hand. Fire. In your mouth. Fire. In your belly. Fire. In your feet. Anybody come out with fire. Anybody have fire. Raise up your hand. You want fire. To fierce them. You want fire. To war them. You want fire. To confront them. You want fire. For the witches and warlocks. Somebody call them some fire. Call them more fire. We say we call them fire. They don't like fire. But we are called them fire in a mandible. We want fire. Somebody say fire. We tired of them. We want fire. Somebody say fire. Somebody say fire. Say fire. Fire. Fire, fire. Oh, fire. Somebody say fire. Somebody say fire. Somebody say fire. Look at your name and say neighbor. Me carry the robe of fire. Anytime they release them evil arrows after me by carbon shine, by it reach near me, it catch fire. Somebody say fire. Look at your name and say neighbor. They want mad you, but the fire I go destroy that demon a madness then send dopey to follow you but the fire I go destroy dopey somebody say fire here a pure fire we are true and if you see going beside somebody when you have no fire just touch them and say catch fire somebody clap a to touch them and say neighbor receive fire you want fire in your bone 
May I get warm? May I get holy ghost warm? Somebody shout yes. Me no want no cool hatches. Come on, no somebody. We want fire. Longevity. Somebody shout yes. Let the fire keep on burning in a breakthrough. Somebody shout yes. The minister, evangelist, prophet, pastors, let us burn the fire. Fire. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I must have the fire with me for I dare not walk alone. I must feel the fire near me and his arm round my soul then my soul somebody say fire let your soul say fire your soul is about to catch fire look at your name as a neighbor nobody told me today nobody said me make too much nice because the fire in my bone i can't keep quiet every time I come to church, I have to raise my hand and shout. Somebody say, yeah, say fire, say fire, say fire, shout fire, call on fire. It's going to burn them up right when they have you. Fire, I come down, say fire. If a Africa, they have you, say fire. If I treat it that, then who are you doing? Me, I release you by fire. If I key man, then lock you down. Some of you can't go back because them put up roadblock against you. Come on, somebody can't travel. Antichrist put up roadblock against you. But today, Antichrist must die by fire. Somebody say fire. Raise up your hand. We must go and preach the gospel. But so Antichrist put up roadblock against the righteous. But the righteous have a weapon. Somebody shout yes. Shout yes. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. The same God will deliver the children of Israel gonna deliver you today somebody shout yeah shout yes I feel my preachers I feel my preaching here look at your neighbor say neighbor see him God a morning see him God a healing master God a God somebody raise your hand shout fire shout fire me a madman for God I am uncontrollable somebody shout yes you can't cool me come on somebody I've been through hell I've been through it look at your neighbor say neighbor you are going through hell by fire don't stop we are going through by fire somebody shout yes you are going through the test by fire persecution by fire somebody shout yes spin your roll give him a shout say fire say fire say fire say fire look me look look today we want to talk about our 2023 project i've gone to visit a lady a senior citizen and her husband and her name is Iacin. amen praise god and of course listen to me they're living in the most deplorable i can't find word to describe the situation where they're living and so the breakthrough project for this year is to restore this house and the infrastructure and the amenities for this senior couple in our country Praise God. We want persons to come on board and join with us. We're going to show you her and, and, and what she has to say and then some footage of the structure. And I want everybody to get it, to, to really, really, from your heart, help us to make this happen. We need construction company. We need people to donate 
um, whatever you can. Labor or time. We need to make this happen for this couple in our country, Jamaica. Watch and be blessed. I give God thanks to be alive, to be well yes. in my shack. Yes. I just want to praise God for Pastor Mark Stewart and the crew. Breakthrough ministry is the greatest thing in my life because they have healed me, have took care of me, and still taking care of me. Yeah. Here they come today to just look at the shock, how mash up it is. I give thanks, I'm, I'm grateful for Almighty God because I'm his picnic. Yes. And he served, he do a lot for me. Even when I'm disobedient, mm. God is good to me. Mm. No matter what, God is good, he's mm -hmm. able. Psalm 23, the right. Lord is my, my shepherd, shepherd, I shall not want. All right. He made me lie down in, in green pasture. pasture. He restored my soul. So he leaded he me, me beside the of righteousness for his name's for sake, his name's sake. Yeah. surely goodness and mercy shall, shall follow him. Him. Oh. and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever forever and ever and ever amen amen all right so we are here at sister Iasin's house boy i'm telling you it's it's a it's a nice house but it's a shack at this time it has been torn down as you can see the roof is completely gone chichi ridden inside the house is a mess Nobody should be living in this condition, especially our seniors. So we are appealing to you out there. We're going to transform this place. We want to transform it. We want to give her something brand new. And her husband, they're a couple. Her husband is out trying to make a living. But right now, I want everybody to look at what we're showing you and to see how we can come together as Jamaicans, as partners, and rebuild this place, renew this place for this woman. She deserves, they deserve, our senior people in our country deserve to live a better life. And these are the kind of things that as, as a ministry we want to do. We want to help people like these to live comfortable. Whenever she sleeps, whenever the rain falls, she sleeps in water. The roof is leaking profusely and all the water comes in. As you can see, she's surrounded by bushes, trees. So we want to debush. So and we want to take off this roof and replace it. And also, we want to renew in the house. We're gonna need some stuff. We're gonna need stove. We're gonna need a fridge. We're gonna need bed. We're gonna need dresser. We're gonna need anything that can be given and donated. Please, we're asking you. We can't do it alone. This is a mama task. It's going to take a few, probably a few millions. But whatever it takes, we want to pledge to do this for Thank this you, couple man. in this place. So Thank please, you, come on board. Come on board. If you're watching this video, come on board and help us make this happen in the name of Jesus. If we can help somebody as we go along, our living shall not be in vain. Please, partners. Please, brothers and sisters, let us give. Let us contribute. Let us donate and make this happen in Jesus' name. God bless you. I'm looking forward to your support. I'm looking forward to you calling, emailing, texting, and saying, I want to contribute something. I want to be on board to make this possible in the shortest possible time. God bless you as you support us in this venture. God will bless you richly. God bless you, Mama. We're, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. I love you. I love you too. We're gonna, yeah. we're gonna make it happen. Yes. Sir. Right here. Yes, We're going sir. to do whatever Hallelujah. it takes. God is going to bless. Jesus. You. We give God Hallelujah. praise. All right. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you, folks. Thank you. Looking forward to hear from you. Thank you. I am asking our supporters from the corporate world to help us in assisting Mr. Wilbert and Mrs. Hyacinth Williams in rebuilding the roof. If you want to contribute or donate to this cause. You can Zelle or Cash App 470-685-0448 or email stewartmark123 at gmail.com. You can also donate by using JN Bank in Mandeville, account number 
80691 BNS 640823 or Bank of America Canute Stewart 123 at gmail.com Canute C A N U T E S T E W A R T 123 at gmail.com or you can call the office at 876 775 1113 or 869-9522. Come, let's work together and make this happen. Yes, Jamaican, out of many we are one. This is your independent song. Come with me now, make we sing this one. Eternal Father, bless our land Guide us with your mighty hand Keep us free from the evil one Save us God from all corruption Jamaican Everybody lift up on your hand Jamaican Everybody sing this a song Jamaica Land of the fastest man Jamaica Land of the fastest woman Jamaican Out of many we are one They say we are African They say we come from the motherland They say we live in the Caribbean They say out of many we are one Jamaican Everybody Raise on a hand Jamaican Everybody sing this a song Jamaican Everybody lift up on a hand Jamaica Land of the fastest man Jamaica Land of the fastest woman Jamaican Out of many we are one 